Hello readers, I am your designated bookworm for the day, Josh, and today, this episode of Books to Ponder, we will talk about The Inferno, which is part one of Dante Alighieri's Divine Comedy, and uh, which deals with Dante, the fictitious version of himself, as he travels through hell and interprets his journey through there and how the people in his during his time of life which was the end of the 13th century beginning of 14th century so he was born late uh 1200s and then he died in 1300s uh and throughout this book he talks a lot about italian thinkers and just people of well that are well known in his culture and others throughout uh religion and throughout time and history and the story blends this kind of comedy in a sense of like making fun of these people slash kind of criticizing these people but also like holding some up with high regard and it also blends both catholicism and ancient like greek mythology roman mythology you have a lot of different mythologies mixed to create this hellscape that dante goes through and so during this journey and the version that i'm reading is the signet classic uh it was translated by let me see here i need to look i think it's yeah john ciardi i apologize if i'm pronouncing any of these names wrong but it's really well done he uh he does a good job of like making this excerpt before each chapter and explain what Dante's talking about, why he used this thing, the symbolism in that. And because of that, it's really hard to kind of make your own interpretation since someone who has a skill and has the education and background that professionally does this, that translates it into, um, you know, English and modern vernacular. And because of that, I kind of want to just kind of look at what Dante goes through, the, some of the symbolism in here, and just my own thoughts that I was having during this journey Dante goes through. And, and Dante's not alone in this. He has a guide, a spiritual guide who's dead, who's also a poet. Dante is a poet. And poet, in this term, I wouldn't say matches like what you would think of just some poet today as like a writer. And this time, it's more of almost like philosophy, and they do more than just right in a sense and so uh and then when it starts off the first like portion of hell you see these people like the philosophers and stuff who almost went as far as they could without god's reach and god is a very big part of the story and so and and it's just interesting to see how each circle each and like hell is broken up into multiple things and like but I can't even describe really what it is. It's one line, like they're going down further towards the center of the earth. Like they believe that hell was in the center of the earth. And throughout that, there's these different circles. And then eventually you get to like these, it, it's, I don't even know how to describe it. Like the best way, when I saw the picture of it, it's like a flat area that bridges connect, but there's like these divots, like ditches almost that have different centers and what they've done inside. And that's like a whole nother part. And you have to go down this like waterfall of like river blood kind of thing. And there's some pretty graphics scenes. And one of the things that I want to point out too is this whole thing is written in verse and each stand, it's like a three sentence stanza and it's very rhythmic. It end like the first line and the third line, the end of those rhyme. And it's just amazing how Dante was able to, I don't know, keep that up in a sense and keep it going to where it's engaging and entertaining and the power of the words that he chose. It's really a good read for people who want to write and it shows the importance of the word choice and sentence structure and just the fundamentals of writing but it's also entertaining in the sense where it makes you think and one of the key things that i took away from this besides just the terror i guess of hell 
and just how horrible these people, I guess, were being punished. And you see Dante take pity on some and then just absolutely <laughs> destroy others. Like, he yells in their face, tells them they deserve everything they got. Even kicks their head and pull, pulls their hair just to show how horrible they are. And it's interesting because in this in these versions, Dante uses symbolism to kind of show what happened, what they did, the sin they did in the living, kind of is represented in hell. And so they're continuing to doing what they chose to do. So in a sense, like their punishment is just like the act of doing, if that makes sense, like. Uh, an example, one of them that hit me the most was the scene, um, I, I believe it's after, there's, if it's, it's rat, no, no, it's not rat, it's greed, and there's the hoarders and the wasters, and before that, I didn't really think of wasting as being greedy, but it is, in a sense, like, both are keeping or throwing things away that others could need, but instead of giving them away, they just either keep it for themselves or throw it away to nothing. And during that time, because of this greed there, how they look is construed in a way that you can't really tell who was who. And they're constantly pushing this giant boulder back and forth because all they can focus on is the, the item in life that they, they held on to. And one thought was better, like hoarders thought they were better than the other and blah, blah, blah. So they're just pushing against each other. And there's one where there's these this two guy is at the end right towards the end like the worst at the end when dante and virgil are climbing out of hell they have to literally climb up satan and he's this giant beast of a mot like with bat wings and he's blowing like these wings are rat like i can't even think of the word i'm talking so fast but they're beating so fast and with such ferocity that ice is freezing that portion of hell and that ice scape is where the worst of the worst go and these are people that have sinned against like there's a por portion dedicated to Cain there's a portion dedicated to the sin of that Judas committed like sinning against your own blood sinning against the country sinning against I can't remember the third but the fourth one was sinning against like choosing something over God and that's where Judas and like similar people are there but like judas has the worst punishment he's like satan has three heads to represent the godhead like uh, opposite and each head has like a center inside its mouth and judas is in the center and being like you can't even see his head it's just but virgil explains that this is judas and then there's brutus and um gosh what is it Cassius. and before they get to that at that end there's these two guys in the living that they, they don't, Dante doesn't really say what they did, but they did really something terrible to the people. And the one partner went against the other. And so he took him and his family and put him away, and they were dying of starvation. And this man had to watch his sons just starve in front of him. And they kept saying, Oh, you know, eat me, father, so you can live or something. And do all this stuff. And it was just terrible and disgusting. And then. They don't. He doesn't eat him, and the kids don't eat him or anything. But they they die in front of him. Each one dies, and he dies. And then in hell, because how you die and how you treated people in the living determines what torment you are. You have to endure for eternity. And since he died of starvation, the rule is that whoever made you starve becomes your food for eternity. So they, when Dante sees these people, this person who died of starvation is literally eating the skull of this at the neck and just eating this dude and it, and it will for eternity it's just disgusting and all and there's just all these symbolism and things going on and throughout it it made me think oh wow you know and there's other moments too that you see and like that one's a good example of people still being terrible to one another like and i've seen before that um these people can't even move. They can, he can move like one arm and they're talking, they just start being absolutely rude to each other. And he's hitting each other, hitting and with little movement they have, they use it to hurt each other. And all I can think of is like, you guys are in literal hell. Your life is terrible. And you're still just 
destroying each other. Like, why are you tormenting? You're already being tormented. Why are you making it worse by focusing? And it made me wonder if that was one of the other reasons. Because I don't think... One of the characters that Dante meets, or spirits, shades is what they said, but says they didn't have time to repent. And so it makes me wonder that we see this as like a symbolism of like, hey, these people are so guilt ridden and like so stuck in their ways that they couldn't even get out of that mentality or that that style of life and we and it's just kind of correlates with the world today like we all go through struggles and things and yet we still berate and belittle people and I, and I'm guilty of it too, but it's like, why, why do we, I, we do this? And I know that sometimes like when I don't see people as other, like fellow sufferers or fellow human, I guess like you lose that side and it's more internal. You just think of yourself and you're like, oh gosh, this person is doing this to me or whatever. And then you just act out because you think it makes you feel better. But in reality, it usually doesn't. And it just really like, gripped me while I was reading this to be like oh gosh you know like why don't I do more to help people around me and and then the other thing that stood out to me was the fact that when Dante goes through this he deals with during the when he was alive people accused him of things and certain parts of his journey through hell you see those accusations that pop up and he shows like how his character is struggling, and that was super cool. And it it really it was kind of hard read. Like I'll, I'm probably gonna have to read it again just to really truly understand what happened and take myself away from just the whole scene and understand. And it also made me wonder while I was reading, like, why hasn't someone modernized this? And I think part of it would be because it would be very scandalous especially if you went to the extent of like naming people like Dante did like I can't imagine the repercussions that he may have went through after publishing this thing and the trans person who translated the John Sarati person even mentioned how this once this was published that it immediately was a classic like people were like wow this is amazing and I'm jumping left and right but I, I really enjoyed this this story. I'm excited to read the next parts, which is Purgatoria and Paradiso, which is Purgatory and Paradise. And it's basically his... And that's the thing, too, because they mentioned that he's alive during all this. So I'm curious why exactly. And that's another reason why I need to read it. Because maybe Dante explains this at the beginning, why he's going through this journey. But, like, throughout the whole time, in the end, like, he's coming to terms with his own sins and the sins of man and and then to escape hell he has to literally face his own demons and the devil himself and climb like it's this the symbolism of that and getting out of this is just crazy to me and I'm not sure how Dante continues this on and forward to keep it that engaging and just the history and the mythology that you get within this and it it just blew my mind and like I hope to one day like I want to be a, a good writer like I don't think I'll ever be great or the best or anything but hopefully I can be good enough to where someone can read my work and be moved in a way or think in a way that they hadn't before like in the and that's one of the big things about this show that I want to do is to show how books can make us closer grow closer as a society and humanity and how they can make you think and question your everyday life and the parts of the inferno that I think are the hardest to get through are the parts where it's not even that they are boring, but in the sense of like, okay, I don't fully understand. That could just be me. Like I'm not the smartest person in the world, but 
there are these parts in it where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going over my head in the sense of like, I don't know who these people are. Like these, um, the people that Dante references, I should say. And that kind of took me out of it. Like I feel, feel if I had a better understanding of who they were, those interviews, like that was probably my least favorite part of when, da- cause Dante pretty much interviews someone in each stage of hell and the each sin and some of them are engaging like the one that i told you about the the guy who starved or whatever and and the actual acts and the things like i know with gluttony you see cerberus but you see cerberus in a way that's different than normal and like he's not really a dog he's like part man part it it is weird like it's weird how dante takes it but it works really well for the symbolism and uh, like it just interests me because, in, in talking about, like, again, I'm going, there's so much I want to talk about and so much that I it just, like, I guess I'm fanboying or whatever, but it it was weird to see, though, how the demons, because you're taught that these are t- terrible things, but they help Dante a lot. Like, Virgil convinces them to help him, and they wouldn't be able to get through hell without these demons' assistance. And there's there's one instance where these demons trick Dante and even then like the repercussions really aren't that bad like they just kind of have a longer journey and but Virgil is very upset with that this happens and it, it it's interesting too how the demons that do trick Dante are the ones that he was accused like the sin that he was accused of and it, it makes you wonder oh well if these things aren't bad why are they tormenting these people and then it also got to the point where it was like if these people experience this every day like literal fire is raining on them and they're going through pain at all times it's like when they eventually just i don't know like stop feeling or like it wouldn't it would lose its effect you know like the only reason why we even know happiness and is because of pain and the only reason why we know of pain is because of like happiness and if that makes sense like we wouldn't be able to know what a feeling was if we didn't feel its opposite and so if they never have moments of joy is it really pain at that point like is it's just their life just <sighs> and it, it made me wonder okay there's moments in our day-to-day life that, and I've, when I've gone through bouts of depression and stuff, like, you get to that point where life loses that joy or that just feeling in general, and so you seek things just to feel something again, and it's very depressing, and it makes you wonder, well, gosh, if, like, it, and this is weird and morbid to talk about, but sometimes it's like, are we in hell right now? And this is just, like, the, this feeling's bad feeling. That's we're, we're graced to have good because God or whatever, if you're religious, like I am. And if not, then, you know, whatever you've come to terms with, what moves you forward in living. And But, and this is really going off track now. I'm not even, like, on the inferno anymore. But it's like, how do we appreciate living and being around with each other and then lose that appreciation at points like is it life just rubbing you down to that point where it's like oh i just can't get to that moment or or is it something else entirely like and, and these are all the thoughts that are going through my mind while i'm reading this book and again i i may read it and do another discussion on it next week or if if you see the sequel then i i kept moving but and i apologize for the randomness of this video and topic and i'm noticing that i'm getting close to the end of my time so i guess to before i get off here if you have any questions about the book or you know, if any questions on what I've brought up today or if you just want a further discussion, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, you know, liking, sharing, and subscribing helps out a lot. 
because I also don't know if maybe this type of I don't know style of video isn't to your cup of tea you don't enjoy it maybe I can do something else like maybe more on the writing side if, you, if you're a writer or maybe more on the reading side and actually go through discussion points on certain sites that I figure because I want it to be entertaining and I want it to be something you enjoy watching and so I'm up for that any recommendation of that I'm still trying to figure this show out and the Potterlings podcast but yeah Thanks for taking the time out of your day to listen to this. I appreciate it, and I hope you have a great week. Uh, I'll keep reading. I hope you do too, and until then, never stop pondering. See you.